your presence was essential, Claire, because I wanted to thank you. <laughs> and uh, as uh, uh, Daniel said yesterday during that delightful reception, uh, everybody is congratulating Claire, but nobody is congratulating actually the Collège de France for having her. <laughs> so I'm extending this uh, congratulation to the uh, Gold Medal Committee of CNRS for making an easy choice. So um, what I'm talking about is uh, joint work uh, with a combination of Andrea Bruno, Gabi Farkas, Giulia Sacca, and Eduardo Sornesi. And uh, let me start with nine points in P2 and blow them up. There will be a surface S later on. And E1, E9 are going to be the accessual divisors. And J0, a cubic uh, through uh, P1, P9. And J prime, uh, the proper transform in S prime. And the uh, relevant uh, definition by Cantin and Dolgachev is that P1, P9 are K alpha if, uh, if you want H0 of S prime O H J prime is equal to one uh, for H between K and one and H zero equivalently. Uh, J prime of O J prime F prime uh, H J prime uh, is equal to zero. Same thing. So it has to do with, of course, it's a Ville and Merendol. Uh, Claire, and uh, also there is relevant work by Chiliberto, Harris, and Miranda. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I should put the theorems there. <laughs> OK? Um, and uh, you see, the fact is that um, wall Wall and prove this part, and Bouville and Merendol gave actually a very beautiful <laughs> proof of this, of this part. Very geometrical, very classical proof. Um, that if the curve sits on a K3, but it actually works also for limit of K3, then the wall map is not subjective. Um, then wall, and I will explain this maybe tomorrow, uh, <coughs> made that conjecture. The conjecture, not in this way, but with, without this. Okay? We are adding this, or limit of such. So, um, but let me say two words again about this. Um, you see, let me say at least one thing. Uh, there is a theorem by Claire that interprets the co-kernel, and more than the theorem are the consequence of this that are important, but the co-kernel of new 
these are in one-to-one -one correspondence. This is more an observation than a theory. That with ribbons, C in PG with C intersected H equal to C. So her observation is that the elements in the co-kernel of nu are actually one-to-one -one corresponding with thickening in PG, not just abstract thickening, but thickening in PG of the curve. The curve lies in PG minus 1, so it's a thickening in PG, such that the intersection of this thickening is the curve itself. Uh, then one of the ingredients of the theorem uh, is that these ribbons may all be integrated as soon as the Clifford index of the curve is greater or equal than 3. That's a way of saying that there are this means, let me make a parenthesis here. This means no G12, no G13, no G25, no G14. So the curve cannot be expressed as a two-sheeted, three-sheeted, four-sheeted covering of, of, or as a plain quintic. As soon as this is, then we prove that the, these ribbons can be integrated. So any element. <laughs> By the way, any element in the co-current. So suppose that you have a two-dimensional. Uh, so you, you have a one-dimensional, so you have a, a K3 or a limit of K3. You have a two-dimensional, you have a Calibre Yau, and so on. Or a virtual Calibre Yau. So, OK, so what is the It's, oh no, 12.30. Ah, okay. Um, so, <laughs> what is the, our motivation? So, you see, with, in the last uh, thing that we did, I mean, just uh, posted a few days ago in the archive, is we wanted to show that this condition is really necessary. That is, that uh, Walt's conjecture had to be modified. So it, it, it can't be true without adding this. So, so what do we have to do? Um, the theorem is this. For, for S bar, or if you want, for C, <laughs> a general section, hyperplane section of a general, that's nice, uh, S bar, half and surface. Um, so this is a Duval curve. Huh? Remember, this is Duval. Take, take the surface, blow up 10 points, put it in PG, look at the hyperplane section, look at the general thing. That is P1, P9 general, if you want. Huh? But, but. Then, C does not lie in any uh, as a hyperplane section is not is not a hyperplane section of a smooth K3. So in this way we produce a curve which satisfies all the hypotheses 
that is this Brinner to Petri because of the theorem before. And um, um, the Gauss map is not subjective, but it does not lie on a smooth K3 surface. In fact, more, the co kernel of nu is equal to 1. So not only does not lie on any K, smooth K3, but on any other surface with canonical sections. That's the unique one. These are things that, uh, well, I should go. Family of K3 that contain. Yeah, you see, it is enough. It is enough. It is enough to give, because of our theorem, it is enough to give an example where the co-kernel is two, say. And there are plenty of those. So given the co-kernel of two, since any ribbon can be integrated, you automatically have this. Ah, only one K3, which extends, I have to think about it. I have to think, I, I cannot, I, I cannot answer you on my foot. <laughs> I have to think about it. Um, um, okay, so let me tell you how this is proved. And let me tell you what the inspiration for that was. I mean, it's, uh, it involves, uh, uh, it involves uh, ideas, you know, Gabi, genus 11. It involves uh, genus 11, the ideas of Mukai in genus 11. So let me complete the picture that you gave. But here we dare play his game. So uh, the fact is this. Let me give you just a little piece of that. Suppose you have a, a K3 surface. S is a K3. So hyperplane section C. And C, you write it as A plus B. Where uh, the genus of C is equal to 2S plus 1, odd genus. The genus of A is equal to S. And say that the Picard of S is generated by A and, and B. Say. Then, what I'm telling you is that the surface, the K3 surface, can be reconstructed from the curve. So I take S, and I do the following thing. I take the moduli space of vector bundle of rank 2, with determinant k and uh, with, I'd say, s. Uh, here I mean that, so an element here, I want h0 of e, that's the notation, equal to s plus 2. That's the notation. And I want to establish and want to tell you that there is an isomorphism between these two. Meaning that. You see, you, look, you take a curve here, you look at this curve, and now you can read the surface completely out of the curve as this object here. This is a strange object because, you see, this is not just a modular space. You are asking modular space of vector bundle but where we are asked, we are imposing a certain number of sections. 
Now, Mukai in Genus 11 observed that the dimension of this is exactly two. In genus bigger than 11, odd and bigger than 11, the postulated dimension of this is negative. That this is, this is a brilliant locus for vector bundle that should not be there. So if we go, if we go back to the brilliant philosophy that is a curve on a K3 surface is brill neutral petri general there you see that you cannot say the same thing for vector bundles because this is a brill neutral locus that should not be there for a general curve. So this is a way of saying why a curve is, what is special about the curve on a, on a K3 surface is that there are vector bundles that do not belong there. And in fact, uh, uh, these vector bundles are exactly the one that Claire is uh, constructing out of the ribbon, or at least part of those. So how is this uh, done on the case of a K3 surface? Well, you do what uh, Arnaud was doing the other day. You take extensions like this, where x is a point in S. These are two line bundles. You do this extension, and you send x to ex restricted to c. You have, of course, to <laughs> check a thousand things. I mean, you have to check stability. You have to check uh, the, the right number of sections. You have to check that this map is injective, surjective, uh, <laughs> differential is an isomorphism. I mean, it's, uh, uh, but you do it. So uh, once this is done, then you try to play the same game with the half and surface. Can I ask a question? So these vector bundles on the K3, are they stable on the K3? <laughs> Very good, very good, very good question. Uh, yes, in fact, this, uh, this isomorphism passes factors through this isomorphism, where the Mukai vector V, of course, is, uh, what is it, 2, <laughs> C, and S. X goes to curly X and then to the restriction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, 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 uh, that's another theorem, yes. In another theorem, you're proving that. This is a particular example. Uh, this is a particular example in any odd genus, not only genus oh, okay. yeah, yeah. In any odd genus. But we prove, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about this theorem now. It's another theorem. No, not enough. Not enough. You need you need the surface. You need the surface for this. Yes, but but once once you prove it, the surface is erased <laughs> by miracle. It, is, it does no longer appear here. It's just a curve. Okay, so the the but you know, I think it should be true. Because, exactly, I think it should be true. Well, not, well, one has to prove something because we are proving it just for S bar a half in surface. There are many of those, okay? But, but, but you're right, it should be true. So, the, so what, what we are doing is this, same thing. Uh, 
we are doing, so let's take S bar. We are working here. We are working here, and um, now it's again, <laughs> thank you, Serge. <laughs> that give the right definition <laughs> that we need. That is, what is the generalization in the case of a, of a K alphen, of a halfen um, surface of peak equal to two? Is what they call halfen surface of index um, K of index M, they say. Half X, surface of index M, it means, let me say it just in words, it means that, it, that the condition goes up to M, okay, but it fails afterward. So for instance, we are taking half and surface of index S plus one. This means that S plus one J prime, which was supposed to consist just on one curve, is in fact a pencil. We call this pencil B. That's elliptic pencil. I forgot to say because I was in a hurry that this is an elliptic pencil. Okay. If the genus is S, the genus of B is one. I forgot to say this. So this, and then you take the residual, and you take C is equal to A plus B. So you take those half and surfaces. These are the generalization of peak equal to two. So you can do everything on, 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 <laughs> with just plain curves. This is what I mean. Uh, now, now what you do, you play the same game, but everything <laughs> And uh, everything is different. That is, there are more many extensions in this case. In, in, in the case of K3 surface, the extension was unique. Here, there is a P1 of extension. You have to work it out. I mean, it's, uh, but there exists, the fact is this. There is a basic lemma. There is a unique EX such that H0, oh, for every X, of course, given X. S, S, on S. So you want to extend this maybe that has trivial on the curve that you're going down? Let me continue my talk. <laughs> I will say this exactly. <laughs> okay? So H0 of, um, H0 of EX is equal to S plus 2. Okay? And for X, in, not in J, these are locally free. This is the lemma. So there is this unique and this locally free. If X is in J, then the situation is the following. You have zero. So this extension, if X is in J, Like scraper on X. So you see, if X is in J, what you get is that these bundle EX are all pullback of the unique extension. Here, this is unique from B to A, like this. So this is what you want. Why? Because if X is in J, since J intersected C is uh, empty, 
when you take x going to ex restricted to c, the only thing that you see is this one. x is in j. So when you restrict to a point, the, this bundle to C, it, the bundle doesn't see this X here. So it only sees this one. So it's always the same bundle. So when you restrict, when X is in J, all of these goes to a point. So in fact, you get a map. At the end, you get a map from S bar to MC2. K, C, uh, S. Just same restriction map as in the case of K. Same, same restriction. Um, where, of course, because of that, J gets contracted to a point. <laughs> now it's even worse. I mean, not only you have to you have this one, so you have to prove all sorts of things. In particular, you have to prove a priori, because in order to prove that this is an isomorphism, you have to prove that this is a normal variety. So in order to prove that this is a normal variety, you have to compute the dimension of the tangent space at a singular point. The dimension of the tangent space at a singular point is 3. <laughs> so you're done. Uh, and this is a, an incredible, uh, to us, it was an incredible stroke of luck. I mean, it's exactly 3. So, okay, so, but uh, th th this doesn't say, this doesn't end the story, also because I have four more minutes. So, um, the <laughs> at, at this point, it could very well be, so that is, from the curve, you reconstruct S bar. But who is telling you that there is not another K3 surface, smooth K3 surface? passing through S bar, through, through C, right? We just proved that. So the argument at the end is the following. And we need the theorem I was quoting below with uh, Rune and Cernesi. Suppose my contradiction. Suppose that x, there is a K3 surface x, and that x intersected h is c. Yeah, the, 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 well, you have, it's not obvious. It's not obvious that, that there is no K, smooth K3 surface. Not obvious at all. Because you just proved that the, that half and surface can be reconstructed by the curve. OK. But it could be another. The fact that, so, so let's make a, a family of those, OK, where at the center fiber is x, and where for general, very general, and suppose that this, there is a, a varying hyperplane section here, CT next year. Right? And for very general T in D, in delta, Picard of uh, XT is equal to CT times Z. We, because we don't know about this. This is just any surface that could contain the curve. So we don't know anything about this surface. But certainly we can construct a family like that. Now, um, there is uh, this theorem uh, with Bruno Cernesi that uh, if you take Vt equal to 2 um, Ct S, then M Vt Xt is actually isomorphic to M Ct 2 KCT S. It can be that is the, the modular case. Because you see, it is a very special case of rank two 
where you have the isomorphism between the surface and the moduli. Otherwise, you have to pass through a Fourier Mukai transform. It's not immediate. It's only in rank two that it is auto Fourier Mukai. So, but here you have it. This is what we prove. I mean, generalizing what uh, Mukai did, we have this isomorphism. So, what do we have at the end? We have two families, say, a family M, X over delta, whose uh, gen who's, uh, uh, fiber is the modular space like this. Then we have another family, say, M, C over delta, whose fiber is M, C, T, to K, C, T, S. Generically, they are isomorphic because of that. So here, at the central fiber, this is the central fiber, this is S bar. Here, at the central fiber, there you have to check it. You have to use, in fact, again, <laughs> an observation by Claire. You have to check that the central fiber has a smooth point. So that M V0 X has at least a smooth point. Then you're home. Because it has at least a smooth point, the singularities, you can check it easily, are just A1 singularities. But now it's Kulikov, because you have a degenerating family of K3 surfaces having a central fiber S, which has an elliptic singularity, and another family, which is generically isomorphic to it, which has a central fiber, a K3 surface, with an A1 singularity. The monodrome is different. So that can be. And that's the end.